Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Fallout. Not Fallout 76, but Fallout. The reason I'm saying that is because I want to talk about Fallout London. Specifically about something that they mentioned during the last update. Something that actually shocked me quite a bit. Bethesda has never reached out to us during our entire tenure. And despite their social media posts being about us, and despite the fact that they have put us on their load screen, that was only done through communication with the community manager. We've never had an in-depth conversation with them, ever. But before we go on to that, for those of you who may not have heard about it, Fallout London is a complete overhaul for Fallout 4. It basically takes Fallout 4 and puts a new game's worth of content and sets it in London. So as part of that, they created a whole new map set in London with London-centric factions. Plus a huge amount of main and side quests to flesh out the world. Basically it's a new game. It was due to come out in about a week's time, but due to the new update that's going to be released for Fallout 4, that's been delayed indefinitely. The reason is that the new update is almost guaranteed to break the Fallout 4 script extender, which Fallout London and a huge number of other mods rely on. We don't exactly know how long it will take to update the Fallout 4 script extender, but even after the script extender is fixed, I'd expect that the Fallout London team would have to spend significant amounts of time just testing to make sure that nothing else is broken. So I expect that the Fallout London mod will take several months to come out, at least. If you've never heard of it, uh, you should definitely keep an eye on it because it's definitely shaping up to be an amazing experience. Now the thing about total conversions like these is that they often don't end up being finished. But at the same time, if they are finished, they tend to be of very high quality. One of the major causes of that is that they tend to be overly ambitious. This is driven by a love of the game, so you end up with people who want the ideal version of the game. And so the scope tends to be very, very ambitious. Because of that, most of these total conversions don't end up getting finished. So when one gets this close to release, like Fallout London, that usually means they should expect a very high level of quality. So anybody who likes Fallout should definitely keep an eye out for Fallout London. GG has obviously been our saving grace and we cannot recommend them more highly. They've been utter angels. And if you can, you should also support GOG for helping out the team. I've always been a big fan of GOG, but hearing this makes me feel even better about them. Make sure to also support GOG if you can. Now let's go back to what I was so shocked about. According to what the devs said, it seems that Bethesda for some reason hasn't helped the dev team at all. And the reason why I'm so shocked is because if you look at Starfield, and if you look at some of the things that they said, there was a strong implication, either directly or indirectly, that they wanted modders to actually go in and create their own worlds. So it seemed that they wanted to lean into creating the overall universe, but leave plenty of spots for modders to do their thing. So you have some set locations like the main cities, but the majority of worlds are blank canvases for modders to do their thing. So having that frame in mind, I was really surprised that Bethesda hadn't helped Fallout London. As they mentioned during the video, Bethesda certainly went out of its way to advertise the mod, right? So I think most people actually got the impression that Bethesda was helping these people. And frankly, it made a lot of sense that they would. And the reason I say that is because it would make perfect sense for Bethesda to adopt such a strategy. One of the advantages that Bethesda has over other developers is that they've made the engine quite moddable. That goes back all the way to Morrowind. Models are able to take what's in the base game and the base lore and project their own vision onto it. Such a modding environment then creates people who are skilled with your game. And if you look at the mods, you can get a good gauge of what their abilities are like. It's kind of like how the popularity of the Unreal Engine gives an advantage to people using the Unreal Engine because you can then have a lot of people that you can hire and use within your team. So instead of having to bring on people and train them on your custom engine, you can simply hire someone who's familiar with the Unreal Engine and just get them to work straight away on your game. That kind of benefit is one of the reasons why CDPR chose to go with the Unreal Engine for the next game instead of their custom Red Engine. And the same thing applies to Bethesda. So instead of having to hire people out of the blue, you can simply look at the modding teams like for example Fallout London and hire some of the people that have shown their skills and their enthusiasm for your product. 
Another benefit of having such a modding environment is that mods beget mods. So for example, somebody created the Fallout 4 script extender and now most mods use it. So you can see how the existence of a mod or a tool like that then allows people to take that and build on top of that to create their own products. This is a key advantage for Bethesda games. You know that when you buy a Bethesda game, you will have a plethora of mods. If not a release, then soon after, right? There could be small quality of life improvements, or there could be graphical improvements, or in the fullness of time, there could be complete overhauls like Fallout London. So you know that you're not just buying a game. You're buying a product that will have a life for years and years, if not decades. Just look at how vibrant the Skyrim modding scene still is. In case in point, mods like Fallout London are still being made. And keep in mind that Fallout 4 is nearly a decade old now. And that in turn extends the life of the franchise as a whole. Imagine for a second that Fallout and Skyrim didn't have the modding scene that they have. How long would they have lasted? There's a very good chance that they wouldn't be anywhere near as popular as they are now. And part of the reason why people look forward to the next Elder Scrolls or the next Fallout so much is because their interest in the franchise is kept alive by those mods. So in many ways, these mods are the best ads you could possibly have for your franchises. This is the reason why people look forward to the Elder Scrolls 6. This is why people look forward to Fallout 5. The mods keep the community interested in your franchise. And this is something that really shouldn't be ignored. So if Bethesda is looking to benefit from the modding community, as they seem to have wanted with Starfield, the least you can do is make sure that modding teams have the best support they can possibly get. Cooperating with modding teams would actually benefit Bethesda enormously. Sure, you'd have to expend some time and resources in order to make people available to speak to the modding teams, but at the same time, the amount of benefit that you get is enormous far beyond the cost of the resources. From Bethesda's perspective, it's almost a no-brainer to support these teams. But for some reason, they don't seem to be doing that. Despite the fact that most companies would kill for a modern community like Bethesda's, from the fact that Fallout 76 is still being supported, there's the Fallout TV show, and Fallout 4 is getting a new update, it seems fairly clear that Bethesda does understand that these games are great advertisements for the franchise, so I would have thought that it would be a no-brainer for them to support the modern teams. The only reason I can think of for Bethesda not being in contact with the Fallout London team is that there might be a lack of direction here from management. They may not fully realise just how important the modding scene is to the franchises. If there is such a feeling behind this lack of contact, then I think this is to Bethesda's detriment. They would benefit enormously from actually leveraging this kind of modding scene. They should be encouraging it. They should be getting in contact with people. 